Hello everyone, Average Gamer here, and welcome to our first Let's Play of the official campaign for Germany. Uh, before in the live stream we did uh, just a quick little sandbox on easy. Now, but now, everything is is set. Um, didn't change any settings, just hit Germany, hit start. A um, couple things you need to know about uh, about Germany uh, prior to World War One. Number one, Kaiser Wilhelm II, or the first. One of those two is currently our emperor. Um, well, he's the Kaiser. Uh, second, we are allied ourselves, or have allied ourselves, with the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is currently uh, being nicknamed the um, the Blissful Apocalypse. Is what the country has been nicknamed. Um, the reason why for this is historically Austro-Hungary um, is uh, basically a, almost a city-state empire. It's made up of about I think it's about 10 to 12 different cultural groups. Um, later on becomes things like uh, countries like uh, uh, Yugoslavia, um, well, Sarajevo is already in there, uh, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Poland, Austria itself, uh, Bosnia, um, a whole bunch of different countries all come out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, all these groups are currently fighting for, for dominance. Um, all of them want independence, but, well... Uh, for, uh, Joseph there, the second, I believe his name is. Is it Joseph the second? Joseph the first. Franz Joseph the first is, well, he has no heirs. And he's coldly just, he doesn't care. He's like, you know what, I'm the emperor, this is the way things are going to go. Now, thing problems there is that he had no children. His wife at a young age was assassinated, Cece. And long story short, um, his nephew, Franz Duke Ferdinand, Sorry, Franz Ferdinand, the Duke, or the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was his heir apparent. His heir apparent is calling for reformers within the government, reformers within the way the empire is run, to give people more rights for workers and, and all these things. Um, with that in mind, he is assassinated. He is assassinated while um, in front of City Hall in Sarajevo. Um, after a sec uh, during on his second assassination attempt, uh, meaning that he was earlier in the week, uh, there was a failed assassination attempt. So then he went to City Hall within Sarajevo to lodge a complaint um, in regards to that to actually call, you know, to basically complain to the, the, the city, the mayor, and the people in charge uh, about his security. Coming out of City Hall, he was then assassinated by a Serbian, um, we'll say, uh, revolutionist uh, guy, basically a guy who was trying to help, you know, a supporter of the Slavic independence, uh, you know, Yugoslavian independence. Um, since they're known as the Blissful Apocalypse, sure enough, the apocalypse follows. Um, the Emperor, in his amazing ways of uh, Franz Joseph II, uh, declared that the universe has, re has, has repaired and rebuked what I could not. Basically, he didn't agree with all these uh, workers' rights things. Because of that, um, he was happy that, you know, first Franz Ferdinand was actually dead, um, which was kind of weird. Figure, you know, it's his nephew and all that stuff, but no. In the following days and months, um, his ministers and industrial heads convinced him to also then invade Serbia. Serbia was the thorn in the side, or the um, the snake that was biting the nip and nipping the heels of the empire. Well, so that uh, so they do that, um, which then gets Russia involved, which obviously then pulls in the Entente. Now, Germany, on the other hand, the country we're playing as, we're playing as Kaiser Wilhelm the Second. Ish, <laughs> um, we are the cousin of the King of England, George V, and we're also the cousin of Tsar Nicholas II. I forgot his name. Um, we are actually the... I believe it is the nephew of Queen Victoria, uh, who actually did not like us as a child. She saw us as the outsider, the um, the angry, the, the, the problem, the problem child of the family, which is true. Um, 
uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II actually had a deformed left arm. Most people don't know this. Um, whenever you see him in pictures of uh, riding a horse, uh, walking in public, he's always got a cane with his left hand. Because his actually arm, if you notice, is actually a little shorter. You can't see this, but it's a little shorter. Um, his left arm. This, this is my left, this is my right. But you can see in a different angle. Um, he's actually shriveled up due to a birth defect. Now, he blames that on his English blood. Um, at one point, while well, actually hunting, um, I think during the, actually just the year before the war started, he got into a hunting incident and hurt himself. And screamed out, damn this, damn this English blood. And because of that, obviously you can tell, he doesn't like the fact that he's part English. Actually, English. Um, he's married to um, his cousin, technically, who is also a, nie uh, a niece of a nephew. A niece of Queen Victoria as well. So yet again, cousins of Tsar Nicholas II and King George V. Um, that's pretty much where we're at. We're, we're just angry that we're English. We don't like the English because of it. Uh, we don't like the fact that the English have spread around the world and you know we don't feel as though we have a, uh, a fair slice of pie and we want that, we want more pie. <laughs> That's going to be the name of our series. Germany, the Great War. We want more pie. <laughs> um, so this is just going to be a quick little set of video. Now, we're going to be fighting against French. Now, the French are a little different. They're a republic. Um, they're run by the aristocrats. Now, catch 22 here. Number one, the current president of France is René Vivani. Vivani. He is the primary, we'll say, supporter and pusher of the Entente. The Entente is the, um, that's actually not the official name, the friendly name, the, the official name is the Entente Cordier. Uh, we learned that in grade eight, I think. The Entente Cordier is actually the friendly uh, concordance, so the, uh, the, friendly, the friendly agreement where Paris and England and Russia will basically fight anybody. Um, in this case, Germany and Austria-Hungary. Um, why? Because France is actually one of the more major aggressors in this in this era, um, two reasons. Number one, they recently lost the war against the German Empire and actually lost the region of Lorraine and uh, I think it's Elance. Well, this region here in, from from Germany and it was annexed from them. Now they are not happy about that. What makes it even more apparent that they don't like it is their current president Rene is from that region. He actually doesn't have a home technically anymore. Um, where he's from doesn't exist. It's part of Germany now. Um, so that's kind of cheesing him off. And in conjunction with that, England is looking at Germany as flexing its muscle and kind of pushing on on its its world dominance. England, on their hand, is spread around the world. At this current moment, they still have... The um, was it the empire that the sun never sets on? Um, K uh, king George V is king of England, king of Ireland, um, king of Canada, emperor of India, uh, king of South Africa, and king of Australia, um, and multiple other islands and little territories all over the place. Um, they have massive, massive holdings in Africa and northern uh, South America. Same with the French. The, the British are more lackadaisical in this case. Um, if you read up a lot on it, the German, uh, the, the the British at this point never really cared too much. Agatha Christie once wrote, um, "We we read in the papers of an assassination of an archduke." People were always assassinating people in that area of the world, and we don't really think much of it. Even though this assassination is one of the main causes of the war, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, so that is where we're sitting at. We are playing as Germany, one of the, you could say aggressors, one of the non-aggressors in the country. Kind of makes away how you sit, right? Basically, the war, the war sits, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia, Serbia declares war on Russia, sorry, uh, Serbia aligns with Russia, Russia as the protectors of the Slavs, go into, you know, attack Austria, we defend Austria by attacking Russia, the Entente associated with Britain and France, then declare war on Russia. We then put in the put in place the Schuttenfield Plan, 
which is a massive invasion through Luxembourg and Belgium into northern France along the uh, area known as Flanders. So with that in mind, we're going to pretty much play on um, just normal for the first little while. Get things going, get, our, get things situated. A um, couple things that I do want to say. Oh, we weren't paused. Well, we are going to pause. We're going to read this up. Austria-Hungary has long been our ally in the region and remain an important partner in our efforts uh, to, to redefine the balance of power in Europe. We will need to remain to remain allied with them and support them as needed. The Triple Entente of France, Russia, and Great Britain uh, cling to an outdated map of Europe. Should Russia or France threaten Austria-Hungary, we must honor our agreements and engage them directly. Our hope is that Great Britain can be persuaded to merely observe the conflict and not interfere. So, long story short, some people say that this was a war to end workers' rights, to quash communism. Some people say this was a family dispute. Um, and this was a dispute between, basically, the heirs of Victoria, as three of the five major countries involved. The leaders were actually directly descend direct descendants of Victoria. Um, well, other people say it was the very first... Basically, this was just a war that needed to happen. Uh, it had been a decade since the first major war. There were multiple uh, uh, conflicts down here in the Balkans, with the Austro-Hungarian Empire being involved. There was a thing that was nicknamed the Balkan Powder Keg, where everyone expected that the next major war will be based around the Balkans, um, which, well, which is exactly what happened, basically, when you kind of think about it um overall i think that uh, we're gonna have some fun we're gonna slowly build up germany and get that military machine going uh we're gonna do a few things number one we're gonna increase our production for uh, industrial or for military goods we're gonna stockpile our military goods we're gonna set up our ministers to run a lot of stuff automatically for us and just let them do their thing um and basically we are uh we're gonna go to war so in the next episode, we're going to get our ministers up and running and ready. Um, get our economy kind of in a position where we can get things going and uh, kind of go from there. Till then, see you next time. Bye-bye.